welcome all uh, uh, to the video lecture for the course on chemical engineering thermodynamics 2 this is part of the undergraduate chemical engineering degree program at shastra dim to university tanjore and i am narain from the school of chemical and biotechnology so this is again in continuation of the earlier lecture on uh, l1.1 a short video lecture on setting the stage for why thermodynamics 2 has to be studied by chemical engineers so in the, the end of lecture 1.1 uh, we took a break and we asked the question of ourselves like suppose if we want to make a chemical uh, it is a compound uh, which can be made eventually to a finished good or a commodity product from a raw materials what are the informations that we are looking for so if we want to do this transformation let's say c1 c2 or some chemical species which are available uh, primarily to us which are like say as raw materials we want to build a plant we want to build a production facility to convert this c1 and c2 to c3 and c4 c3 c4 are also chemical species now one of these could be our desired species so what i mean by desired is we are building the plant to make primarily this chemical and at times we may also get other chemical species other chemical compounds as part of this transformations so we we usually call it as a by product or a co product so in the lecture l1.1 uh, we took a break asking us the question was if we want to do this transformation take a raw material so if you remember there uh, we took an example of uh, chloroform uh, being made from either methane root or a methanol root uh, adding chlorination so let's say if we have a methane and uh, uh, let's say chlorine or like methanol uh, again has to be like with uh, chlorine or hcl and we want to convert it convert it into chloroform so what are the typical questions that one can think of what is the information that one require now i have jotted down uh, uh, a few of the questions that i could think of now you could have thought much more beyond this and these questions are not in any order though i have numbered here you can see this as 1 to 6 uh, and uh, in the just a minute i'll just yeah in the next slide as like 7 to 13 these questions are not in specific order of their importance i just uh, drafted it in the fashion it comes to my mind like for example we need to know some the first information we need to know is what is the production target like how much quantity of the product we want to make and what is the specification for that product the specification of that product could be in what shape do you want do you want it as a powder do you want it as a liquid or is it a gas form what is the purity that is acceptable and so on and so forth then once we know what is the production target obviously the question is how much raw material is required to achieve this now obviously this question of how much raw material is required to achieve will based on conversion and selectivity so we need to either get we would be looking for either some experimental data or we will assume we will make and this assumption has to be rational so obviously then uh, is by experience or by any previously available experiment data so it is either our own experimental data or an available experiment data which will act as a rational behind our assumption to think of this conversion and selectivity so once we know this conversion selectivity we will calculate on how much raw materials are required then we need to know whether the compounds formed or some the information that we know is whether the compounds formed are stable or not whether they decompose like for example is this a reversible reaction that uh, uh, that the c3c4 formed can in turn uh, in turn decompose to give uh, c1 and c2 so that may also we need to think of uh, whether all the components are in the same phase so that means whether uh everything is in the liquid form or it is a gas form or is it a gas liquid reaction if it requires catalyst let's say the catalyst is in solid so then we can have a liquid solid reaction or a gas liquid uh, solid reaction where gas and liquid could be the reactants of the product phase and solid could be the uh, uh, the catalyst phase 
Now, if they are in different phase, how to do mix them? So, suppose if uh, let us assume that the C1 component, uh, uh, the C1 component is in liquid form and the C2 component is gas form. Now, how will you mix these two? Because if you don't mix these two, then obviously the reaction uh, is not going to occur. So, that would be some information that knowledge is required. Obviously, we require what temperature and operating conditions we need to do and how much energy has to be supplied, what is the sequence of operation. So, that means uh, what we should mix first, whether we should mix uh, liquid with a gas or a gas should be sparged in a liquid or liquid should be sprayed in a gas. So, both are possible, right? If you have, like say, for a gas liquid reaction, you can spray a liquid in a gas or you can bubble the gas through a liquid stream. How will you separate the components? Because if you see in the earlier slide, the conversion will not be 100. So, if your conversion is not 100, then eventually you know that if you have a reactor, let us say you have a reactor here and let us say that you are sending C1 and C2. These are two chemical species. C1, C2, I do not refer here as methane and ethane. So, do not please get into organic chemistry of nomenclature C1, C2. C1, C2 are two chemical species and if this reactor is at some temperature and pressure, uh, we not only get here C3 and C4, if we get only C and C4, which essentially means conversion is 100%, but this is not always possible. So, we get C1 and C2. So, it will be a mixture. Now, from this mixture, we need to separate. So, you will have to send it through a separator, okay, so that you will get through C3 primarily and uh, or probably C4, let us say for example, and if you can separate out C1, C2, you will uh, end up in recycle, right? And this uh, C3 and C4 eventually goes to an another separator so that C3 can be separated out uh, and then like that goes for uh, your uh, baggaging. So, this is like what is about what I am talking about uh, in terms of separation. Then obviously, we need information on the cost, what equipment we will do this uh, separation process, what is the size of those equipment, safety, is this process inherently safe, are these chemicals toxic, are these hazardous, if it is hazardous, how are we going to change it, is there any other non-hazardous way of uh, doing the same process or producing the same chemical, if it is an effluent, how it can be treated and so on and so forth. So, this is not an exhaustive uh, list of questions, but I would say that I have given a fair amount of the questions or the data rather uh, that is required. So, that means these are the infer these are the information, these are the information that one will look into, one requires before even they start uh, thinking of building a plant. We need to do all this information. We need to get all this information to do this. Now, uh, and you might have also got, as I said, much more beyond this, but I have just restricted uh, to something around 13 information. Now, if you see in this particularly, uh, let me take one thing on like the energy is uh, spent on this process or it at times it is obtained during this conversion process. So, that means you can have either an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction. So, there is somewhere energy is spent during this process of getting the desired product from a raw material or you supply energy. Now, primarily energy is produced or supplied, I mean spent in two places. One, during the reaction step. Is it clear? So, during the reaction step, you require energy and the next is for the separation. Is it clear? For the separation or purification. So, that means you are thinking of uh, separating the component, purifying it to a required spec. What I mean is you purify it to the required spec so that uh, you can sell it to your next uh, uh, buyer of that product, buyer of that chemical, rather, right? Now, during reaction, also we need to spend on energy, we need energy expenditure, and during separation, also on during uh, energy expenditure. Now, can you just think for a moment what is this energy expenditure? Why is energy is to be uh, uh, 
supplied why is the energy required right when uh, for the separation process let us take our example that we have a chloroform which is clcl3 maybe we will also have uh, dichloromethane and also uh, uh, carbon tetrachloride if you have gone for an one more chlorination step or just methyl chloride so let us not assume now ccl4 so we will have methyl chloride so this is uh, ch3cl so we will have methyl chloride dichloromethane and trichloromethane which is chloroform and all these is sent these are part of a reaction uh, at the exit of the reactor this is sent to a separator column okay ideally we want like this so we want chcl3 to come out like this let's say uh, ch2cl2 and uh, probably like ch3cl we want like this or at least we want this to be coming out separately and not mixed with uh, uh, not mixed with uh, the dichloro compound or the methyl chloride right now the point is is this feasible so is this really possible is this uh, a feasible something right i mean is this a going to happen if at all at any given condition at any given temperature pressure whatever this condition do you think this mode of separation is possible let's say even if this is possible right if this is preferred uh, is it going to happen on its own so what i mean by in, in it's going to happen on its own maybe this temperature itself would be coming at like say 520 degrees so do you think at 520 degrees they will separate like this or will this happen at some other uh, temperature and pressure something like that right so that means uh, the separation of components from a mixture does not happens on its own is it clear the separation of components from a mixture does not happens on its own so is it clear so separation of separation of components from mixture okay does not happens on its own so can you think of some examples that you have seen so that you can know that indeed yes this will not happen on its own right i would give a clue if you take in a beaker water okay and then like say put some red ink okay uh, what will happen after some time right you would see this that the red ink would have completely dispersed this red ink would have completely dispersed in this water the red ink would have completely dispersed in water you don't need to uh actually stir it with a spoon or something but it was dispersed so this process of mixing so this is a process of mixing or in this case uh, we typically call this as diffusion this occurs on its own now from if you say this as a state one and this as state two do you think without spending energy can you get it back to the state one so is that possible this is something i want you to think now it is from this such examples we can relate to, to production of chemicals also so that means the separation of compounds as such from the reactor outlet mixture is not feasible just like that or it is feasible to some extent so that means we are indeed now thinking of two questions one is there any maximum conversion at a given condition and the second is if i am able to separate from a mixture what is the best possible uh, separation that is achievable now from where i got this first question this again go to this slide where i have told that if it is going to be reversible then that means uh, the system should come to some equilibrium point so it will not go convert beyond that 
So if it is going to be a reversible system, so that means uh, what is the maximum conversion that is expected and what is the best uh, separation? This is the case which I have explained here. So if I have a feed mixture at some condition, so what is the best separation achievable? So that means which is a favorable route for a given process. So if there are two routes, like say if I say an ink, uh, 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 water containing an ink droplet does this is the favored route or is this the favored route? Now I can give an intermediate state and then ask whether that will go to state 2 or state 1 and you will know this in example that it will always go to state 2. It will never come to an unmixed system. It rather goes to a mixed system. Now this is a very simple case of water under dye but you can think of such uh, situation in terms of chemicals also. Are these going to be spontaneous changes or are these changes going to occur only at certain conditions? What are conditions I mean is the temperature and pressure. So are you able to slowly think that uh, of the different questions of the different questions or the information that we want uh, in terms of carrying out reaction, we have bottled down, we have narrowed down to something like is our reaction uh, reversible? If so, so what is the uh, theoretical maximum conversion that one can attain for a reversible reaction? And then means uh, given a mixture, so that means uh, given a mixture of chemical compounds, what about the separation that one can think of? This, these are the three important things that we could figure it out from the uh, list of informations that we have initially jotted down uh, for a reacting system. Now, if we want to answer these questions, if we want to answer these questions, then we need to know something on solution thermodynamics or the solution thermodynamics is what uh, more conventionally called in undergraduate curriculum as thermodynamics 2 or this is also called as phase equilibrium. Phase equilibrium thermodynamics. Now I am not saying these are the only three questions but uh, we will take a break here and I will uh, you can think on what are the other such questions that one can frame in depth in detail the specific questions that one can think of right when you want to build a plan to carry out a reaction right i gave one clue here or probably i also gave one clue here when i am talking about this diagram so that is related to a separation system so i think uh, you would be able to get it so if you can revise and think on it those are the questions if you want to answer if we want to find out uh, how to answer these questions, what makes the answer to these questions, then we need to know about the solution thermodynamics. The phase thermodynamics, phase equilibrium thermodynamics or the solution uh, thermodynamics deals with the subject matter, the knowledge component that helps us to understand these questions. So the solution thermodynamics lays the foundations based on which these questions can be answered. Now, only when these questions are sufficiently answered, we would be able to uh, make up a production plan for producing a chemical. So, and that's why uh, the chemical engineering uh, undergraduate curriculum lays importance on solution thermodynamics and that is why an any processing engineer should know thermodynamics. Now, I uh, will break here for a discussion so you can discuss among yourself try to take examples uh, from other industry and an activity I want to give during the break is can you take uh, for the production of a same chemical so let us say a same chemical compound let's say for example if somebody is producing let's say styrene right can you look into the process flow sheet for the production of this compound and see whether the same separation sequence is followed or a different 
separation sequence. What I mean by here is, we it's a production of a particular compound from a given raw material. So that means the product compound is same and the raw material compound is same. You need to just go to the different processes that is being adopted by the manufacturing plant and then see whether all the industries that produce styrene do they necessarily have the same sequence by which they separate the styrene from the uh, feed mixture from the reaction exit mixture or are there any differences in the separation sequence this is an activity i want you to do it in the break and we will continue in the third part of lecture based on this uh, what is on what i called on the separation sequences for a given compound and i'll also give some examples uh, that will uh, that will probably uh, of curiosity in nature which will again connect back to the solution thermodynamics. Thank you for your patient watching and uh, this is Naren signing off from Shastra.